As we said, last night brought many firsts. On top of the record number of women heading to Congress and the first woman of color from Massachusetts, we saw the first openly gay man elected as governor, the first Muslim women elected to Congress, one of whom is the first Palestinian American, and the other the first refugee having come here from Somalia. There were also the first Native American women elected to Congress, all of whom I would argue would fit right in in my next guest's new book. It's called Modern Herstory, Stories of Women and Non-Binary People Rewriting History. Activist and author Blair Amani profiles 70 different women, girls, and non-binary people who come from underrepresented groups and have helped change our world. Blair is also the founder and director of the nonprofit Equality for Her, and she joins me now. Hello, Blair, and congratulations. Thank you so much. So as I said, you write about a lot of people who have been erased and overlooked, as you say, but with major contributions. Do you think those milestones last night are going to make people like the ones you write about less airbrushed in the future? I would hope so. I think that when it happens all at one time, it's really exciting for people to be able to like look at it as a moment. And you have that strength, you know, that power in numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but also I think it shows other young people. Like I was um, at an event last night and a young woman named Deja Fox from Arizona said she was going to run for office. And it starts to sound less and less novel and more just like, hey, this is your career path. How'd you pick these 70? By the way, I'm embarrassed to say, but maybe not. I didn't know That's 75 percent. I know, but yeah. so how'd you pick these 70? Well, a lot of the people um, had been influential in my life directly, people like Feminista Jones, people like Jamila Lemieux, who directed, mm -hmm. directly affected my life and my activism, but also people who I felt like didn't get enough attention, people like Lorraine Hansberry, who was the first black woman to have a show on Broadway. Raisin in the Sun. Absolutely. And uh, just people who, you read them, and I read them in history books, and I was like, why don't we know about them? And why don't you include people that everybody knows, people who are first name famous, you know, uh, Ellen, Serena, uh, Oprah, why would you include them here? I wanted to talk about things that these women did that might get overlooked, you know, even though we know them, you know, we know Oprah, we know Ellen, but there's still elements of these people's lives that we don't talk about, like the fact that Ellen and Oprah, you know, Ellen came out because Oprah had her on her television right, show, right. and Oprah played a, a therapist on Ellen's show. It was very much in tandem and not uh, adversarial or competitive. Between can I tell you a couple who uh, uh, really made an impact on me, and maybe you can, you know, give us 30 seconds of a story. Patsy Mink, I told you before, I actually met Patsy Mink oh, in amazing. Washington years ago, but tell us who she was and what her significance is in 2018. Oh, absolutely. You know, she was the first Japanese American woman elected to Congress. She um, went her during high school, Pearl Harbor happened, and she's a Japanese American. She's seeing people in her family uh, being interned, and she decides to turn to public office to make America a better place for more Americans. When I think, you know, it could have been a time of turning away. Title IX also is huge oh, Title in 2018. Is absolutely and she huge. is the author of this, no? Yes, and now it's called the Patsy Mink Equal Opportunity Act. So she was, you know, posthumously named after her. Mm -hmm. um, but she is really just a powerhouse, somebody who's anti-war as well. Yeah, I, I want to mention the two people you mentioned at the beginning, Marsha Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. And the reason I mention them is because you say at the end of the, your book, until you went to LSU, which is where you went to college, you hadn't heard of them either, which I, I love. Sort of Tell us who, everybody knows, I think, the event. Yes. But people probably don't know them. So who yeah. are they? Who so they? next year is actually the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots. Mm -hmm. And these two, you know, trans women of color were at the forefront of this movement, really saying, you know, we can't just have this homophile movement, which is what it was called more, you know, archaically. Mm -hmm. We can't just have a movement that says we're just like you, except we're gay or except we're trans or except, you know, we're genderqueer. We have to say we're going to reject uh, respectability. We're going to re reject police brutality, and we're going to riot if it's necessary to take our rights back. And so, um, you know, we just saw in Massachusetts the Yes on Three, which mm -hmm. is an amazing protection yes, yes, yeah. for trans uh, transgender people. And so, it's really um, this legacy rooted now in the present. Speaking of question three, sitting in your chair, Laverne Cox was here two weeks ago. Oh, amazing! She was. I think she turned a lot of minds. She was just unbelievable. Who's the audience? For this, and by the way, the art, I know you didn't do it, I'm sorry, is fabulous. We're showing yes. some of it. Who did the art, by the way? Monique Lay. I met her on Twitter. She's great. She's totally great. Who's the audience for this? Is it kids? Is it adults? Is it everybody? Who is it? Well, I'm seeing a lot of bookstores put it in different places in the bookstore, but I think it's for anybody who wants a primer on how to have a feminist conversation, how to have an intersectional conversation. There's a glossary in the back, which really uh, digs deeper into different terms and conversations. But I think at eight years old is a good place to start and, you know, just going on up. Glossary is good. You don't have to be embarrassed asking questions. I say you can just read. You know, I'm, I'm, when I'm reading this last night, I'm saying, why does she think this matters? Is it because as an ethical thing, we have a responsibility to expose people to those who have changed our lives? Or is your hope is that by learning about these people, it will change people's 
lives. What was I your motivation? So. You know, uh, growing up, the, his the, the heroes in history were, are always white men, and so there was always this profound respect for white men, and that's how patriarchy and white supremacy becomes established. But when we start seeing that the heroes of history are people, you know, who look like you, who look like me, who look different than us, then we can start to have um, a more profound respect and empathy for these different groups and realize that greatness doesn't come from one demographic. It comes from everyone. Do you see a time when a book like this wouldn't be necessary, or is that just ridiculous pipe dream stuff? I would hope so. You know, uh, I would hope that it would just become so ubiquitous in the culture that we would know people offhand who, you know, the first X, Y, Z. Um, but I think that until we get to this point, this book is a great place to start. Before you go, your parents were pretty proud of you. Oh, and the yeah. Fears, I have some photographs, by the way, we're going to put up for people with some swag. They do. What'd they do with your book cover and all this sort well, of stuff? Well, they blew me away. You know, I got home and they had these yard signs like I was running for office of the book. Um, my older sister had cookies made of the book. My aunt had a cake made of the book. <laughs> my mom had coasters made of the book and matching hijabs. So uh, my parents are very excited and I'm just you know I feel very blessed to have a family that roots roots for me um, but I also hope it can show people that there are families out there that will support you no matter what and my family is one of them that's great well not only are they excited I was excited when I saw you kick Tucker Carlson's ass so nice to see you congratulations Thank you so much. on the book again the book again is modern herstory stories of women and non-binary people rewriting history